Hello everyone, I'm Chris Brunel. I'll be doing my presentation on the gender wage gap, which I know is a hot topic in today's society. I know most of you probably know a lot about it, but hopefully I can go more in depth and hopefully you guys can learn something from this. So probably the most simple question you can ask is, what is the gender wage gap? Well, just to put it simple, it's the gap between what, what women and men are paid in the workplace. Most people don't realize the full effect that wage gap has on society as a whole. Not just the women, but families as well. So men, you are not out of the clear in this because obviously if you have a family and your wife or girlfriend is working, she's bringing home less of a paycheck than she should, so that directly hurts you guys as well. And you know, this is a big issue for our society because people my age are starting to enter the workforce. I know we might not think of it as a, something too big now because we really don't have like full-time jobs or anything, just you know, part-time jobs that really don't affect us too much, just to get us through college. But once we do get up there and we start to realize the effect this has on us as a, as a society, we're going to want to change that. If we don't change it soon, we're going to get trapped into the same process that we are in now for who knows how long. So we need to you know, have changes soon or now. So just some more just some statistics behind the wage gap. Uh, when women enter the workforce, on average, they will earn only 81% of what a man will make in the same position and field. I mean, just think of that for a second. They're doing the same exact work that men are, they're working the same hours, but yet they're getting the short end of the stick here just because of their gender. I mean, how would you feel if you were given your paycheck and it had a 19% deduction on it, and just written out just for being a woman? Like, you're, they're taking away 19% of your money just for being a woman. I don't know about you, but I would be pretty darn upset. And there is good news to this, though. Uh, looking at trend charts over at aau.org, uh, 1960 to 2018 trend line would suggest that by 2059, you will have equal pay amongst men and women, but using a trend line of 2001 through 2018, so a smaller sample, it's that one suggesting we won't have equal, equal pay until 2093, so that's gonna suggest that our process has slowed in the smaller time frame. And just um, 2018 average salaries for men were $55,219, and women were $45,097, so you can just see the difference there, about $10,000 difference on average all work in the same hours, same kind of positions, and they're still making less money. So we went over a broad perspective of how the wage gap affects women just compared to men, but we can actually dive a little bit deeper into the race of different women and how their pay is affected even more. I mean, some of these are way off just the average for women. I mean, a lot of them are, we'll talk about it right now. So Hispanic women are actually getting at the absolute worst. They're only making 54 cents for every dollar a man makes. I mean, that's pretty much half, not exactly half, but pretty darn close to it. They're only bringing in $33,450, which we showed men were making about $55,000 on average, so they are making significantly less than men. They are Native, uh, not Native American. Hispanic women are getting at the worst as of right now. Then second worst is Native American women. They're only bringing in 55 cents a dollar right now, which is $33,571, which again, is way off the average that men are getting every single year. And an African American woman, they are bringing in 62 cents for every dollar a man makes and $38,036 in her annual income. And Caucasian women, surprisingly, they're actually not bringing the most money out of all women, except Asian, but Caucasian women or white women, they are bringing in 80 cents a dollar for every dollar, 80 cents for every dollar a man makes and $50,000 per year. Then an Asian woman, they are, they are actually bringing the most money out of all women, 82 cents for every man, every dollar a man makes. And just about over $50,000 per year. So that's the breakdown of how different you know, races are affected by the wage gap for women. And there actually has been some legislation on the wage gap. This is not going under the radar by the government. It's always pressured by people, protests, and the government obviously is trying to do things to you know, make this, give us equal rights with women, with, or equal rights for women with men. And so we're talking about some legislation that has been passed. So we're first talking about the Equal Pay Act of 1963. This one is pretty significant. So the Equal Pay Act actually amended the Fair Labor Standards Act of 1938, which had to do with employee rights. But the Equal Pay Act was put into place as a federal law that prohibits pay discrimination on the basis of gender. This is obviously a great step in the right direction in protecting people of different races or gender of being underpaid. But unfortunately, after 56 years, you can see that we are not equal yet. But it's not like it hasn't done anything. You know, in 1963, the wage gap was at 58%. Now we're all the way up to 82%, so obviously it has helped some. We're not completely equal yet, but we are, you know, trends have suggested that we are heading in the right direction. And the Lil Lily Ledbetter Fair Pay Act, and if you're wondering who Lily Ledbetter is, she was actually an um, employee of the Goodyear Tire Company, 
And she wasn't just like working there recently or just for like a couple years. She was in there for a long time. And she was she had had a lawsuit versus Goodyear claiming she wasn't being as paid much of her as her 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 male coworkers because of her gender. And the jury actually awarded her three point five million dollars in the lawsuit. And this actually was signed into uh, signed into force by President Obama. It was actually his first piece of legislation he signed while in office. And this act was just to help ensure that the businesses are not being discriminated discriminatory towards race, gender, and to help recruit the strongest talent possible with equal pay for all. And then we'll talk about the metaphorical glass ceiling. I'm sure everyone knows what the glass ceiling is. It's a pretty popular you know, term. And really, this was just first used in the 1980s, which stands for the invisible and artificial barriers that block women and minorities from advancing up the corporate ladder to management and executive uh, positions. So. Uh, while women are more involved in the workforce and the rise of them having a full-time position in companies is increasing, they still aren't holding higher end positions just more on average than men or even being close to it at all. In 1991, Congress found that women and minorities were still getting the short end of the stick and decided to pass the Glass Ceiling Act, which was titled to the Civil Rights Act and created the Glass Ceiling Commission. And then the higher end positions that women are holding, there are more positions that don't have much of a future of advancement. So even if they are holding higher end positions, they're not like the best higher end positions on average. And then just in conclusion, I do think we are heading into the right direction and that there is laws put in put in place to help enforce this. Obviously it's still happening today and we're not all the way there yet. So I do believe people my age are the ones that need to step up and help push this even further so we can get on our ways to equal pay and equal rights. Thank you and that will be it.